Hi everyone, welcome. We're preparing to check in on these two systems, these European Nightcrawler worm bins. I checked in on a couple other of my European Nightcrawler worm bins just yesterday, but those systems are almost 100 days older than these systems. These systems are my younger ENCs, and it's been now 12 days since we last checked in on them and gave them something to eat. So now before we dive in, let's just really quickly cover the fact that these systems at least over here in bin number one is where we've got this compostable bag test going on and at this point as you can see this test almost started a year ago just a few days less than a week away it'll be a year now that we've um, been trying to run this compostable bag the actual number that I've um, got running as far as elapsed time in the worm bin though that I'm counting as the time it has taken is 314 days there was a period of time when the compostable bag was not really immersed within the system and wasn't really, from my point of view, actively composting. So I deducted a little bit of time from the elapsed time, overall elapsed time, to determine the uh, actual in progress of the composting itself of that compostable bag. I mean, it started out looking just like any other comp uh, plastic bag, like the ones we just removed off the top surface. But gradually, over the past almost a year now, it's been slowly, uh, slowly vanishing. Somehow all staying connected as one piece. But let's quit talking about it. Let's check it out. So let's see something about these two worms here. Here too. It looks to me. I mean, I hate disrupting them, and it's just difficult to see otherwise if you don't disrupt them. But there are a couple worms over here attached to one another. I'm not sure if it's visible, but they're attached right there under my pinky, the tip of my pinky, and they're uh, mating. That's the way it looks when uh, worms latch up to one another and they're mating. And I mean, just really quick, I'm not sure if I'm seeing things, but it might have been another instance of it happening right over here. Yeah, here too. There's the point where the worms are latched on to one another. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's good news. I do assume that me coming in here and being this disruptive is going to cause them to uncouple and bring an end to what they were doing there, which is kind of an unfortunate thing, but hey, it's time to get them fed. Oh yeah, you know what? Before we go too far in, one of the things they're getting, you might have noticed it earlier, was a couple slices of bread, but I did notice in the video when I reviewed it, review, reviewed it from the last check-in was that I forgot to dampen the bread that I gave them. Sim similar bread to this, same exact bread off the same loaf. But those pieces, I'm curious to see if they went anywhere over 12 days by not having first been dampened. So that's definitely a curiosity in these systems. Oh yeah, and I've got these, such an airhead. I've got these little biscuits here too. They're so dry. <laughs> you can hear them. You know, I did put quite a bit of water in here. Perhaps these little biscuits can now go to the bottom. The bread, I believe, is pretty much soaked at this point. I'm starting to wonder if I used perhaps a little bit too much water. Eh, well, either way, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to get these things soaking before we get to feeding because um, I did put dry slices of bread. Let's let's see how that bread's coming along. It feels like I've been just chatting here. and Well, I mean, we got a chance to check out a few mating worms. And there's another pair. And I don't know if it's the same pair I had in my hands earlier, but... It's something I definitely like seeing, that's for sure. Something going on here that the worms are getting uh, frisky over. So usually, I mean, I, I try to position the compostable bag somewhere that it seems like they might come for it, like on the newest foods. I think I found it. It's right here. And I always, you know, if you're a regular here, you'll already know, but... For those of you that are new, it's just something I do is I try to take care not to damage the object 
that we're sort of testing because it is just more interesting I think in the end to know you know what the worm bin itself did to the objects that you put in there I mean I know what I could do to it I could shred that thing I could you know tear it up and disperse its bits and pieces throughout the system it probably actually help it you know break down quicker if I did something like that but that's not what's interesting is it <laughs> all right I believe we were pretty generous on the bedding too last time I can see little bits of it still lingering around here and you know I'm now I'm reminded another unusual thing that we put into these systems which was just um, usually it's kitchen scraps like what they're getting here today banana peel all kinds of other stuff quite a wide variety but here these were the stems perhaps too long trying to make them all same height or whatever to go into the vase these are tulip stems and they were tulip leaves too they were just thrown in with all my other frozen kitchen scrap type food so that they also went into the worm bin frozen and here's just a really slow going item the seed out of a mango I think it was possibly just during the last visit that we came in here and we managed to open up these seeds I think there's another one that we also opened up over in the other system so let's uh let's keep these two check-ins kind of in sync we've kind of gone through the more tender careful one you know by fishing out the compostable bag before really digging in and excavating the feeding zone here we can just sort of pick through and look how leftovers are coming along perhaps find a mango seed like this one right here yeah. they're gonna be around the same state of progress I would say because they've both been in the systems probably the same amount of time and the systems are set up to be fairly um, even in terms of the way they're set up and the way they're managed and all that other fun stuff what do we got down here just thought I saw a big, large chunk of some light-colored material. Maybe it was just a little bit of bedding sort of sticking together. No, this seems like some sort of vegetable matter. Well, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the matter is. <laughs> They're going to eat it all. They're not too picky. So you know, I like what we, I like what we did last time, which was to give them a little bit of bedding underneath the feeding zone. So I'm going to grab my my bedding because that's the one thing I don't have on hand so I'll be right back and my prepared bedding is starting to run a little low I might have to make some more one of these days but at 150 some odd days of age even though I'm kind of stingy with bedding in some of my older systems where I expect that I might be harvesting the castings from the system soon so I want to limit how much debris gets mixed up in it on um, here I do expect we got ample time to see this stuff get worked down by the wormies. So let's see what we got for them here. Why don't we um why don't we first like we always do in here, in the uh, the one known as bin number one, let's pile in the more distinct leftovers we found along the way, and then perhaps even using a newer piece of yummy worm food, we could lay down a optimal foundation onto which we can position our compostable bag which I mean we've looked at it closely over and over many check-ins to me it doesn't look much different from the previous one so if you're following along um, that's kind of my assessment <laughs> and next time we check in on it it will have been a year since we um, started this test not quite a year as far as I'm concerned those as far as the actual uh, active composting of the object that's just a little over 300 days of age but yeah I mean regardless of which it's already been quite a while that's for sure so a little bit of frost a little bit of bonus moisture and you know we didn't encounter any of the um, bread that was put in here dry last time this time it gets the benefit of being dampened first and uh, I'm just curious if any in the anyone in the comments watched my previous video where I identify I identified what these are exactly. I even flashed their name written in proper Hungarian up onto the uh, screen. I 
guess the only thing I'm concerned with is that these don't seem to be soaked through. The ones I fed in another feeding in the previous video, I did let them soak for quite a while because you heard me tapping one to the other. It was like rock hard. These things are very dry, but you know what? Somehow the dry bread I left in here for them last time managed to get eaten because I saw no signs of it. So we'll assume that we've dampened them enough and then just and not just the thawing of the materials around them will, and the worm bin, and the recirculating moisture within the worm bin will all help hydrate it and make it such that the worms can dig right in. So I'm sprinkling a little bit of grit on here, a little bit of uh, something to help the worms break down the foods they eat. And this is just a little bit of my worm chow, just for good measure. <laughs> and um, the other thing I don't remember seeing is any... Thing that um yeah we do have them sorry i misremembered i guess i was just a little distracted in the beginning we did set the feeding um, zone indicators aside and they certainly seem to be holding up good enough to be reused so we will reuse them and all i'm doing now is just kind of using the need to cover up our feeding zone to go grab some material from a little bit further out to the edges at the same time sort of stirring that stuff up and aerating it but using it at the same time to cover up our feeding zone this somehow to me seems like we're giving all the material in the system a chance to be here to be over there to get stirred around and hopefully get the benefit of worms cruising around to pick off the yummy stuff in it. So, it's the one downside is that it is a little bit um, invasive. <laughs> and it did sort of just turn their entire home upside down. Oh, geez. Here, I almost spaced out, but we do have some leftovers that I think are best positioned right back where the feeding zone is. So that's where all the action's gonna be. Although you gotta admit, even the outskirts of these systems this is the last outer edge we're going to till up, but all the other ones were equally populated with lots and lots of worms, which looks good to me. So let's get that other feeding zone indicator back over here, and we'll be done. I don't see any hitchhiker hikers on my glove, so I don't think there's much of anything to worry about as far as taking care of our little friends here in the bins. So, what do you think? Hopefully, uh, hopefully they were going to appreciate all that bread they're getting these days. It's probably going to be um, a component of a number of my next few videos. Yesterday was just sort of rolls <laughs> and bread, and a couple of those little pastries. Don't forget, if you know what the name of it is, put it in the comments. You'll you'll win brownie points, <laughs> bonus points for knowing what some of that um, baked goods were. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.